Welcome to the Corey Lee Show, where our focus is on building leaders and transforming culture. My name is Corey Lee, and in each episode, I aspire to ignite something on the inside of you that encourages you to grow yourself and to make an impact on the world around you. Welcome to the Corey Lee Show. Welcome back to the Corey Lee Show. Got a super exciting episode today. Um, I'm titling this episode, Perspective Matters. Perspective, it 100% matters. I don't know if many of you remember several years ago, there was this dress that was going around on social media. And the question was, what color is this dress? And some people would say, well, it's obviously black and blue. And then other people would say, well, hold on a second. That, that dress is obviously white and gold. And, and it was really an interesting conversation, but based on the, uh, something with your eyes, the pigmentation would either cause the dress to look black and blue, or for some other people, it would cause it to look white and yellow. In our family, we got five. It's me and my wife and three kids. And two, um, my wife and one of our other children, they see white and gold, and I see black and blue. And your, uh, your perspective, it 100% matters. You know, I think there are three, there may be more, but it's my podcast. So <laughs> there are three main perspectives that I see in, in the world right now and in culture. And one is the perspective of the critic. You got the perspective of the critic, then you got the perspective of the underdog, and then you got the perspective of the champion. And by the way, by the time this podcast comes out, my new book, Champions, should be out. You could get it. I'll have it in the show notes below, but you can go to Amazon. It's called Champions uh, by Corey Lee, or you can uh, go to my website, www.coreyleeleadership.com, and it'll be on there. But in this podcast, I want to I share with you how and why perspective, it matters. And and when I think about the critic, the the critics got a certain uh, perspective on on life, and they have an outlook on life. And their perspective is they like to complain. They like to complain about all the challenges of the day. They complain about how hot it is outside, and then they like to complain about how cold it is on the inside. They complain about how the sun is too bright and how the night is too dark to see anything. They they get they get cut off in traffic on their way to work, and eight hours later they're still complaining on their way out of the door at the end of their shift. But I know that is not you. If you're listening to this podcast, that's not you. That's, that's somebody else. Maybe you know somebody like that, but I'm just trying to show you a perspective of the critic. And so what we're going to do is we're going to let the complainers complain. We're going to let the whiners whine and the moaners moan. But the other perspective is you have the perspective of the underdog. And many of you that may have been listening to, to a podcast um, or followed me at all recently, you know, I, I say living like an underdog is very easy. It, it's quite easy because there are no expectations on the underdog. And so the underdog can sneak up on people and they can get victories from time to time, but they don't know how to live like a true champion. There, there's a difference between living like an underdog and a champion. See, a, an underdog they can get away with cutting corners. An underdog, they can get away with uh, not going all in. They can get away with not giving their best day in and day out. But when you become a champion, I'm going to use a sports metaphor for a second. Once you host up that trophy and say, man, I did it, I'm the champion, the next year rolls around, you're going to get everybody's best. You can't sneak up on anybody. There is a weight of expectation. There is a weight of responsibility that comes with being a champion that the underdog just does not know about. You know, when I think about this outside of sports, the reality is the underdog, they feel unworthy. And, and, and they use words that sound good and appears good, but truly it's actually, it, it sounds like humility, but it's really a cover-up for false humility, and it's rooted in insecurity and a feeling of unworthiness. And so what happens by living the life of an underdog, we actually lay down the responsibility to grow and to develop into our potential. We coast through life uh, and just satisfied and content with the way that things are and the way that things are going. 
we we coast and we drift. I was watching a show on um, Netflix. It's called Sprint. I don't know if any of you guys have seen this, but it's called Sprint. And it follows these track athletes, these Olympic athletes. And um, it followed several different, several different ones. And one of the guys that was on there, he won the Olympic gold medal in the 100. Now, if you know anything about uh, uh, track, the 100 meter, that's the one you want to win because that's how you get the title, world's fastest man, world's fastest woman, right? And well... This guy, he was, uh, he won the, the, uh, I guess the 2020 Olympics in the 100 meter. And he was a Frenchman. He was the first Frenchman to ever win the Olympic gold medal in the 100. And, and it kind of shocked the world. There was nobody expected him to win. And I think it actually even shocked him, right? Um, but he was the champion. He was the gold medal winner. And it started following him and you could hear it in his voice. You could hear it in his voice that he did not expect the weight and the responsibility that came with being a champion. He didn't expect all the, all the attention that he got. He, he didn't expect, he, he, he wasn't prepared for that kind of responsibility. And you can hear it in his voice, and um, he was a champion. But what I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, I don't know the guy, but, but from the sound of it in the one episode, all right, I know I'm, I'm making a lot out of one episode, he was a champion, but he wasn't a champion internally. You could hear it in the sound of his voice. You could hear the words behind the words that he did not feel like he was a champion. He, he, he made the words sound right, but you could tell the words behind the words were saying he did not feel like a true champion. And what, what happened was, was as their season got going on and all these huge meets, he would not show up. He would, you know, maybe he had, um, he mentioned he had all these injuries and, and maybe that's the case. It, maybe it truly was, but I know I can spot this insecurity in other people. The reason I can spot it in other people is because I know all about it. I know all about this, and, and, and uh, I, I experienced this and I actually learned it when I was about 13 years old, when it was the first time I actually understood this. Um, I was in Boy Scouts, and uh, one year we were in Boy Scout, we were at Boy Scout camp, and they were doing this race. They were doing like this 5K, and I'd never ran a day in my life before this, but I decided to do this 5K, and I show up, and we're at the starting line, and all these guys beside me, they're, they're obviously cross-country runners because they got the shorty shorts on, you know what I'm talking about? They got the shorty shorts on, and they got, you know, the, the good running shoes, and I look down at me, and I'm wearing, like, basketball shorts, <laughs> you know, and at that time, basketball shorts were, like, mid-shin, so they they were really long, and I'm wearing basketball shoes. I definitely do not look like a runner, and I'm like, man, what am I doing out here with all these, all these people who actually know what they're doing. But I decided to do it. I run, and y'all won the thing first place overall. I, I won it. Actually, I, I, I won it to the point where I was waiting at the finish line for several minutes before the next person even came through. And I was kind of blown away. Well, the next year comes around, and now I've got expectations. Now I've got people saying, oh, that's the guy who won, who won the 5K last year. Oh, you're the guy to beat. Oh, I'm coming for you this year. And I can remember my stepdad, he, he was doing it in an encouraging way. He truly was. And, and he was saying, oh, I cannot wait to watch you run this year. That was amazing. You won last year. I, oh, man, I can't wait to watch you this year. You've had a whole year to prepare. <laughs> I didn't prepare, right? I didn't run. But he said, I can't wait to watch you run. I'm sure you're going to win again. He was trying to encourage me. But you know what? I felt internally, I felt insecure, like, Wow, that was, I got lucky to win that one. I did not feel like a runner. And so you know what I did? I lied. I made up an excuse that my stomach was hurting. My stomach, I was like, oh, you know, man, I, I, I just don't feel good. I don't know if it's something, you know, something here at the camp that we ate, or if it's the food. I don't know. My stomach, just, I don't think I can do it. I, I just, you know, I just don't feel good. And so I didn't even show up. I didn't even show up. I lied because I was insecure. That is the perspective of an underdog. But let me give you the perspective of a champion. See, a champion, they accept responsibility of what they are called to do. They accept the responsibility to continue to grow and to continue to keep getting better. They determine to be a powerful person of value who adds value to other people. That's the perspective of a champion. 
I know that if I want to add more value, then I've got to make myself more valuable. I got to continue to grow. I cannot rest on yesterday's best. I, I've got to keep getting better. I want to keep getting better because I want to continue to add value. Many of you have heard a very famous um, quote, and I've actually used it in some of the previous podcasts, but uh, from Teddy Roosevelt called Man in the Arena. This is a very famous kind of quote, and several athletes use it, sports teams use it, and it's kind of all over to really encourage and to build up. But it, but part of this quote was actually a bigger piece of a of a speech that Teddy Roosevelt was giving at this time. He was he he was no longer president. He had finished up his terms as president, and he was going around the world making this whirlwind tour. He would go out into the jungles of Africa to get stuff for the Smithsonian. He was meeting with dignitaries, but on this day he was speaking in Paris, and the title of his speech was basically what it was like to live in a republic. But this piece of that overall speech has actually been really well known and gave it its entire title called The Man in the Arena. So here we go. This is The Man in the Arena by Teddy Roosevelt. It's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, at least fails, while daring greatly. So the displaced shall never be with those cold, timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Wow, come on, right? Like it's, you know, it's that armchair quarterback who's pointing out, man, they should do this and they should do that. You know what? If the if if the coach would have done this or or the person in the, the workplace is like, well, you know, the boss should just do this. I wish they would do that. Somebody should do that. That's the critic. They are criticizing, but it's the person who's actually in the game, who has stepped across the sidelines of saying, you know what, instead of complaining, I'm going to get in the game and I'm going to start offering solutions. I'm going to do what I can do to move culture forward. I'm going to do what I can do to bring light into the darkness. I'm going to do what I can do to add value to the people around. While everybody else is complaining, I'm going to get going. I'm going to get moving. Hey guys, I hope you are enjoying this episode of The Corey Lee Show. Y'all, I am on a mission to build leaders and to transform culture. So if you're looking for a speaker who speaks directly to the heart, a mentor to come alongside you and your team, or if you're in a position where you're looking for a personal coach who embraces where you are and also believes in who you could become, then I would be honored to walk this path with you. Simply reach out to me on my email at Corey at CoreyLeeLeadership.com. Look, let's make your vision a reality. Contact me and together we'll navigate the path from aspiration to achievement. Your transformation, it starts now. And so a lot of times what I like to do when I do leadership training, one of the very first sessions, I do this really to, um, well, a couple of things. I do it for teams to kind of kind of bond you when you have open discussion and just uh easy answers like opinion based questions you kind of get to see the perspective of other people and what that does for a team i start to value the person beside me i no longer see them as just somebody who's in the cubicle or or somebody behind the desk or somebody who's out doing marketing i actually start to see them beyond the task and i start to see the value within them. And so I, I like to do this activity that I'm about to lead you guys through just to kind of open up conversation and make, I try to make it fun and those kind of things. But the point is, I want us to see that there is every person you come in contact with has their own map of the world. You have your own map of the world and it is shaped by several different factors. It's shaped by your upbringing. It's shaped by the things that have happened to you and, and the circumstances you found yourself in. Um, your, your map of the world is, is shaped by the things that you allow into your gates, your eye gate and your ear gate. How many of you know that if I'm sitting around watching Fox news all day and that that's all that I allow into my eye and my ear gates, 
it's going to show, it, it, it's going to form an opinion. If all I do is sit around and watch CNN, and if that's all I allow to flood my mind through my gates of my eyes and my ears, then how many of you know that that's going to form an opinion? That's going to form a perspective. And so as I read these off, I don't know how this is going to work through a podcast. Usually it's open conversation. But as I read these questions off to you, I want you to kind of see where you're at. Do, do you believe it's this or do you believe it's that? Like when I ask these, like, which one would you say if we were in a group and I was asking you for your opinion, which one would you raise your hand to? And by the way, there's no fence riding. Some of these sound very similar, but I want you to go with that first, uh, that first gut reaction, first thought, all right? So the first one is in your opinion, is it better to focus on being good at what you do or to be committed to what you do? Hmm, that's an interesting question, right? So, so in your opinion, is it better to be good at what you do or to be committed to what you do? Hmm, which would you say? If we were in a group conversation, what, what would you say? And I just want you to hang on to that. I'm, I'm going to go on to the second one. The second one is, in your opinion, is it better to show that you are secure and stable or that you are courageous is it better to show that you're courageous or secure and stable? Hmm. Which one would you choose? If it was just, uh, you know, we were in a group and I ask you to raise your hand, who all says it's courageous? Would you raise your hand or would you wait for me to say, who all says secure and stable? What would you say? Here's the third one. In your opinion, is it better to be a good communicator or a good listener? In your opinion. What do you think? Do you think it's better to be a good communicator or a good listener? Hmm. You know, uh, it, just as you think about that, when, when we do this, whenever I go in and I do leadership trainings with teams and we, we, we do this, it, it's a fun thing, but it also it really opens people up and, and you start to see the, the teams to connect. And you also start to see eyes open to like, oh, you know what? You think differently than I think. You see things slightly different than I do. And honestly, that's the power of a team. You, you want people who think differently. You want people who see things from a different perspective. That, that's how you do big things. So here's number four. In your opinion, just your opinion, is it better to be a visionary or a continuous learner? Hmm. Just in your opinion. Like, would you say it's better to be a visionary or would you say it's better to be a continuous learner? Here's the last one. In your opinion, is it better to develop yourself or to invest in others? Woo, how about that? If I were to ask you, just your opinion, is it better to develop yourself or to invest in others? Hmm. You know, the reason I like to ask that is, is your answer is based on your perspective, like I said, and your perspective is based on your map of the world. It could be shaped by your, your upbringing. It could be shaped by your environment, the things that you're allowing in. You know, when I read this, when I read, is it better to develop yourself or to invest in others? Well, you know, you think about who I am. I, this is what I do all day. I'm, I'm constantly trying to invest in in other people. And so I'm going to say it's better to develop yourself because you cannot give what you do not have. That, that's what I would answer. When I say, is it better to be a visionary or continuous learner? Well, I would raise my hand to visionary. You know, I'm highly entrepreneurial, but I also know that as I continue to learn, then the vision begins to expand, but I filter it through my map of the world. I want to share one last one here with you because this actually just happened in one of the teams I was working with. We were doing this and I asked the question, is it better to be to be courageous or secure and stable? And the lady raised her hand for secure and stable. And she said, I, you know, I guess it's because um, my family, we were, we were very secure, very stable. We didn't take a lot of risk and uh, we felt it was better to be, you know, the, the saying, it's better to be safe than it is to be sorry. And I thought, wow, that's so incredible because I was raised the same exact way. But my perspective was like, I don't like that. <laughs> that sounds boring to me. 
And so, so when I hear is it better to be courageous or secure and stable, again, I'm highly entrepreneurial. My perspective is it's courageous. And, and her perspective on the same exact phrase is better to be safe than it is to be sorry led to her to be, you know, raise her hand for secure and stable. It, ra- it causes me to raise my hand to say, no, I don't like that. Courageous, right? And, it, and by the way, it doesn't make anybody good or bad. It's my perspective, right? And so your perspective, it matters. Your perspective, it matters. I want to share this story with you. I, I find this story um, hilarious. I like to I like to share it sometimes in our leadership trainings. And uh, this is actually a young lady. She's gone off to college for the first time, and she's writing a letter back home to mom and dad. So she hasn't talked to her mom and dad in a little bit, and she's writing a letter. And this is her letter. She says, <clears throat> "Dear mom and dad, it has now been three months." Since I left for college, I'm sorry for my thoughtlessness and not having written before. I will bring you up to date, but before you read on, mm, you may want to sit down. I'm getting along pretty well now. The skull fracture and concussion I got when I jumped out of my apartment window when it caught fire after my arrival here is pretty much healed up now. And I only spent two weeks in the hospital and now I can see almost normally. And I only get those sick headaches just once a day. Fortunately, though, the fire and my jump were witnessed by Roger, an attendant at the gas station, and he was the one who called the fire department. He also visited me in the hospital, and since I had nowhere else to live, he was kind enough to invite me to share his apartment with him. (laughs) That old Roger, he's a good old dude, isn't he? Come on, Roger. He is a very fine man, and we are planning to get married. We haven't set the date yet, but it will be before my pregnancy begins to show. Uh Uh-oh. His divorce is final now, and he shares custody of his three kids. The reason for the delay in our marriage is that Roger has a minor infection, which prevents us from passing our premarital blood test, and I carelessly caught it from him. Mm. This will soon clear up, though, with the penicillin injections I am taking daily. Wow. (laughs) Now that I've brought you up to date, I want to tell you, there was no fire. I did not have a concussion or a skull fracture. I was not in the hospital. I'm not pregnant. I'm not engaged. And there is no divorce man in my life. (laughs) However, I am getting a D in art and an F in biology. And I just want you to keep these marks in their proper perspective. (laughs) Love your daughter, Jane. How about that? You know, A D and an F, it doesn't sound so bad after all that, right? I can handle a D and an F now that you put it like that. Perspective, it matters. See, your perspective, it matters. When it comes to people, if I view people as objects, I'll use them. If I view people as obstacles, then they'll always be in my way. If I view people as projects, they'll always be broke and need fixing. But if I view people as people of value, then I'll begin to act in such a way to add value. Here's the other thing. If I view culture as dark and that it's only going to get darker and darker, then I lay down my responsibility to be a light. Mm. So here's the reality. Light and dark cannot coexist. They teach you that in physics. (laughs) See, the very moment Like if this room right here that I'm in, if the room you're in was dark, the moment you turn the switch on to flip the lights on, darkness has to flee. Darkness has to flee. So I'm going to say one more time. If I view culture as dark and that it's only, if that is my perspective, that it's only going to get darker and darker, then I lay down my responsibility to be a light. Perspective, it matters. Hey, I hope today has added value to you. I hope it has encouraged you and inspired you. I hope it sparked something to life on the inside of you to say, you know what? I am going to grow. I am going to get better. I'm actually going to get in the game. I'm going to stop my critical ways. (laughs) Hey, my name's Corey. I'm your friend, right? I I think we can all fall into that. Uh, but, but it's not the critic who's counts. It's the person who's actually in the arena. And so I just want to encourage us to get in the game, to start offering solutions to the challenges of the world. Anybody can spot out, spot the challenges. We want to be men and women who offer solutions to bear a light into a world that's longing and searching and groping and looking for some kind of light. 
They're looking for authentic and real. And so I hope today has encouraged you. I, and, and I would love for you, uh, I would love your feedback. If you can uh, comment below, uh, any feedback would be great. Also, one of the ways you can help me is to, to give a review, rate it. Uh, it helps get the message out and then share it with a friend or family member. If it's added value to you, share it. Share it in your email group, share it you know, wherever you want to share it, uh, just get the word out. Right. Um, but make sure you like, and subscribe so you can stay up to date with all the latest episodes of the Corey Lee show. Hope you guys have a great day and God bless. Three, two, one. Okay. Thanks for joining me today. I hope I have added value to you. And if you have found value in this episode, let me know, drop a comment and make sure you share with a friend or family member. See you next episode.